So, which kid are you? The story we just heard from Jesus has become maybe the most famous short story of all time. And the story causes us to think about ourselves. So which kid are you? Are you the prodigal, the party animal, the person who cuts loose? Do you sometimes lose your inhibitions and make unwise choices and take big risks? Have you had some awful mornings after? Are you that kid? Or are you the good kid, the one who keeps the rules? Are you the planner, the achiever, the careful one? Are you the one who knows the value of delayed gratification? Are you that kid? Guess what? We are both. Each of us is both of us. All of us sometimes are the younger prodigal kid. Sometimes all of us are that touchy older kid. Eventually we become wise enough to see that, to accept ourselves, to integrate both sides of ourselves. I think the reason the short story Jesus told has such staying power is that it has both theological or religious wisdom and psychological wisdom. Most of us get the spiritual message. Sometimes we wander far off from God's way and we act in ways that break God's heart. Yet God, like that loving Father in the story, is always ready to welcome us home. It's the whole amazing grace thing. It saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. It's the joy of the gospel, the good news. And sometimes we are like the envious older brother in the story. We are the religious people. The good people, the ones who may not be perfect, but we're decent, and we don't run off and do rotten things. And deep down, we're not happy that some loser can come in with a sob story and claim to be sorry, and then, after a life of selfish indulgence, suddenly get all forgiven and accepted by God. It feels unfair, like the gospel is bad news. This makes the short story of Jesus very powerful as theology, as a picture of how God loves and welcomes both kinds of people. It's the spiritual truth offered by Christianity. But I think the story also has power as psychology. As I said, we are both kids. Sometimes we are the party animals who cut loose, make unwise choices, and end up in truly terrible situations because of our own bad choices. Other times, we are the good kids, the ones who keep the rules, work hard, pay our taxes, and don't cheat. We are both kids. Eventually, we can become wise. We can attain psychological integration. We can accept both sides of our nature. Maybe we accept it ruefully, but we realize it's true. We are both kids. And then, psychologically speaking, we can become like that father in the story. That father accepted both kids. That father generously loved both kids. That father welcomed both kids. We can accept both sides of our nature. We can think of ourselves a little more generously. Instead of being harsh with ourselves and others, we can welcome being human. There's an old Jewish rabbinical story I come back to time and time again. A wise old rabbi of long ago once said this, everybody should have two pockets, and you should have a note in each pocket. One note should say, I am but dust and ashes. And the other note should say, for my sake, the world was created. 
I think Jesus would agree that we should have two pockets, one for each of those who know us. Ash Wednesday gave us the first message. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Easter gives us the second message. For my sake the world was created, and the resurrection means new life for everyone. So, today, which kid are you? Are you the prodigal, the party animal, the person who cuts loose? You sometimes make unwise choices and lose your ambitions and take big risks. Have you had some of those awful mornings after? Are you that kid? Or today, are you the good kid, the one who keeps the rules? Are you the planner, the achiever, the careful one? Are you the one who knows the value of delayed gratification? Are you that kid? Well, of course, each of us is both at one time or another. And true wisdom is to become integrated. True wisdom is to accept ourselves as that father accepts both of his boys. My sweet daughter, the baby Buddha, once asked a very wise question. And like the story of the prodigal son, her question has stayed with me for years and years. She once asked, if you were you, what would you do? If you were you, what would you do? My own answer is to tolerate and accept myself, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and to accept others in the same way. That seems to be what Jesus is saying with his short story. That seems to be pretty good news. That seems to be what we call the gospel. Amen.